Hey everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial and in this session we will look into how to implement bottom navigation bar with the help of block architecture in a Flutter app. And as you can see here we have a simple example of the same. We have a bottom navigation bar with 5 items. And you will also be able to see that as I move over each item in the bottom navigation bar, the corresponding text widget which is placed here also changes accordingly. Just for this tutorial, to keep it simple, we have a single text widget in each of the page. But you can extend it to an entire set of UI components which can be scattered in each pages. So this bottom navigation bar as well as this text widget which is rendered in each page is based upon the block architecture logic. Hope you got a better understanding of what we are about to discuss in this video. With this idea and without any further delay, let's directly jump into the coding part and start with the implementation process. First, let's start by creating a Flutter project. And let's name the project as bottom navigation bar with block. Here we got the default counter app. Let's get rid of these commands. Also, let's remove this home page from this main.dat file. Now, what we have here is a simple main.dat file. Alright, to get started, let's head over to the pubspec and try adding two packages for block pattern. Just make sure you add these two dependencies in your pubspec and after adding these two dependencies let's head over to the main.dat file. Here in the lib folder let's try to create another folder called presentation wherein all the UA components will go inside it. And inside the presentation let's create another folder called screens inside which we have the landing page. So this landing page is going to hold the entire bottom navigation bar items. Inside the presentation folder, let's create another folder called routes. Wherein inside the routes folder, we create another dart file called generated routes. Here we are going to make use of the generated routes for performing the navigation. And here inside the generated routes, let's start by creating a class called route generator within which we create a method called generate route. Here with the help of the settings.name we make use of the sys statement and try to pass in the routes accordingly and the initial route is going to point to the landing page. So as far now we are not going to make use of the navigation here so let's leave it empty and for the default statement let's point to the error route. The error route is nothing but a basic scaffold that contains a simple app bar as well as the body that contains the error text. Okay. Now we just need to return the landing page here which we will be creating shortly. Okay. So therefore let's head over to the landing page and try to create a simple stateless widget class. Now after creating a stateless widget class, now let's turn our focus to the block pattern. Therefore let's create another folder called business logic inside the lib folder. And inside this business logic is where all the block pattern and the block files will go inside. Let's right click on this folder and you have an option to create a new block. And if you don't see this option to create new block, you just need to add this extension called block in your VS code. So make sure you have this extension being installed in your VS code. Only then you have an option to create new block just by right clicking on the place where you need to create it. Alright, let's create it and for it we need to name the block. Let's name it as landing page. You see the successfully generated landing page block. And if you expand this folder, you have three different files. One is for states and another for events and third is going to be the block. Now let me rename this folder from just block to landing page block. And starting with the states, we have the initial state and before that let's create a variable, a final variable called tab index. Because as we are going to deal with the indexes in the bottom navigation bar, we need to have a tab index in each state. Okay, so let's create a constructor for the same. And this is going to be the named argument. Now, followed by the states, let's head over to the events. Here, inside the event, we need to create an event called tab change event. Because upon each tab change, we need to notify the block pattern to switch pages accordingly. So, let's create an event called tab change, which extends landing page event. And inside which we need to create a final variable called tab index. Just the same way, create a constructor for the same, which is going to be the named argument. 
Now moving over to the block here inside the landing page itself, let's set the initial tab index as zero because whenever the page is getting loaded for the very first time, the first index of that bottom navigation bar should be loaded. So we specify the default tab index as zero here and let's get rid of this. Here we need to check for the condition if event is tab change which means that user is changing the tabs in the bottom navigation bar. If so, then we need to emit the same landing page initial. But this time, instead of specifying it as zero, we need to specify it with the value or with the index which the user has tapped. So that tab index we can get from the event. With the help of dot operator, we can access the tab index here. Now we have completed setting up the entire block logic for the bottom navigation bar. So let's turn our focus to the main data file. Since in the main data file, we haven't specified the home page, therefore, inside the main app, we are going to make use of generated routes where the initial route is going to be the single slash and followed by which we need to specify the routes on generate route. And on generate route, we need to make use of this method generate route, which is present in the route generator class. Therefore, here inside the on generate route, we need to pass the route generator and specify generate route. This completes the main data file. Therefore, the entry point of our flutter app will be the main data file. Here inside the main data file, we have the route generator. And here inside the route generator, the initial route is going to point to the landing page, which we have already created, which is going to be the scaffold as of now. First, let's try to create an instance for landing page block, which will be using the process of navigation. Therefore, here inside the initial route, let's return the material page route wherein inside the builder we need to make use of the block provider dot value and the value is going to be the instance of the landing page block and the child for this builder is going to be the landing page so this is how you will navigate to an entirely new page with the help of the block architecture now we have successfully navigated to the landing page with the help of block architecture but this is not completed yet here inside the landing page we have an empty scaffold therefore we need to create the bottom navigation bar as well as add listeners for the tab change events and update the states of the block accordingly. Here inside the landing page, let's get rid of the empty scaffold. Let's first start by listing down all the bottom navigation bar items and that is going to be assigned to the variable bottom nav items. Alright, and inside this list, we will specify the entire set of five items which is going to be placed inside the bottom navigation bar. Starting with the home followed by the category and third is going to be the search, favorites and the final bottom navigation bar item is going to be the cart. Followed by which let's define each screens that is going to be rendered for each bottom navigation bar item and that is going to be placed inside this bottom nav screens list. And for this tutorial, I will be having a simple text widget, but you can have a stateless or stateful widget here. Now, after defining this bottom navigation bar item as well as the screens for the bottom navigation bar, let's head over to the landing page. And here, instead of the scaffold, let's try to specify block on CML. And the block consumer is going to accept the block listener as well as the block builder. Right now, we are going to have only one state which is going to be the landing page initial state. So, when you say this builder, let's return the scaffold. Wherein for the scaffold, let's provide the body as the bottom navigation bar screen. We make use of the element at method and pass in the tab index. And based upon the tab index, the corresponding text widget will be rendered in the body. Followed by the body, let's create the bottom navigation bar. Here the bottom navigation bar is going to accept the item which is going to the bottom navigation bar items that we have already defined at the very top. So this is the bottom navigation bar items followed by which we need to set the current index and for the current index we need to specify the tab index which is emitted by the block followed by the current index let's specify few coloring styles for the selected as well as unselected item and finally for the on top callback we need to trigger the event which is tab change and pass in the current index. And if you restart this application, you will notice that our bottom navigation bar is able to switch pages based upon the on tab. And we also get the corresponding text widget being rendered here in this page as well. So this is typically how we can implement bottom navigation bar with the help of block architecture. So as a quick summary, let me head back to the main data file, wherein inside the main data file, we have made use of the generated routes. The initial route points to the landing page. Here inside the landing page, we have specified the bottom navigation screens as well as the bottom navigation bar items separately inside each list. And followed by which inside the landing page class, we need to make use of the block consumer. And inside the builder, we need to return the scaffold where inside the body we specify the element which is placed at the tab index followed by which we have the bottom navigation bar wherein inside the on tab callback we need to call the tab change event 
and here inside the block the event is going to be the tab change we emit the landing page insert stage this is the only state which we have right now but the change is that instead of passing the tab index as zero this time we will pass the tab index with the index which the user has selected all right so this is typically how the block architecture works well that's it guys that's how you can implement bottom navigation bar with the help of block architecture in a flutter app hope you guys found this tutorial useful if you do so consider subscribing and i will see you again in the next video